you're all here for the lighter, quicker, cheaper, low cost, low, low cost, high impact approach to placemaking. We call it LQC at, at PPS. Um, it's kind of our mantra. Um, I'm not going to waste too much time with introductions. I'm Sam. I'm an engineer at, at PPS. We've got Laura, who's uh, at PPS as well, and Grace from TrailNet, and they've done some amazing projects. So I'm just going to give a quick overview of what L LQC means, a, a couple of examples of what I've worked on, then I'm going to hand it over to Laura and Grace to talk about some of the amazing projects that they've worked on. So LQC, as you all are probably aware, is um, all about starting small, about trying things out, get, about getting people to um, ex experience their space in a different way, very cheaply, and we love it because it really brings the community together, gets everyone on the same page, and helps people see kind of what's possible in, in the space. And it's a fantastic way to get the ball rolling. You can, you can like draw plans and, and, and do outreach and do reports and study things forever, but you know, those things kind of have a tendency to sit on a shelf. And LQC is a great way to like get more, more people involved, get community supports for really great street projects. This is how it fits into um, our kind of PPS system, uh, the short-term experiments. They're the most fun part of the process, they're the most engaging, and they're, they're really effective. So you, you can all see this slide on our, uh, on our website, but it's a really important part of uh, what we, we do at PPS and what we hope you guys will, will, will be doing. I kind of stole this slide from Betablock. They're so good, they're out, they're, they're out in Portland. Uh, the bottom left, you can see what this intersection was like. I mean, I'm sure you've all got like 10,000 intersections like this within five miles of where you live. But you know, look, 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 look what they did for virtually nothing. They created a whole uh, little pu public space right on right on the street, and it was participatory. So we've got a fantastic LQC uh, resource on the on the PPS website. Trailnet also is you, is, you, is yours on your website Not too? Yet. Not yet. <laughs> You can win it, it's amazing. It'll be on their website soon, I'm sure. Um, okay, this is Astor Place, really near the PPS office in New York. This is what it looked like, how long ago, Gary? Not, not a, a year ago. Really wide street, kind of narrow sidewalk. And it's not strictly LQC, because they kind of re repaved it. But this is what the space looks like now. Right? It's great. And it looks, I, 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 I took this when they had taken the umbrellas down because it was a windy day. But it usually has umbrellas there, it's packed. Fantastic example. Um, our friends uh, in Mexico City, they're doing amazing stuff down there. They're doing a lot of these kind of L LQC projects at intersections. They'll just start, they'll cone it out so people kind of get used to the traffic flow, make sure it all works. Keep building it up, building it up. Why not? Why not paint it? Why not make a really vibrant, colourful, interesting area? Ends up looking like that. You know, it's memorable. We we, we love stuff like that. This is um, a little project we did as, as part of the conference in the run up to it. Dero, our sponsors, had lent, lent us one of uh, their, their parklets for a day, and we kind of reclaimed a parking space um, in in Vancouver for a day. Very fun. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Vancouver in a second, but this is in Montreal. Like, it doesn't cost anything to to paint a, a sidewalk, and it just makes it so much so much more interesting. This is a great example in Brooklyn. I, I love this. Uh, it says "Hey you" and "Good day," and it's just it just it just pops. And I, I, I wish I had a before picture, but you can imagine what it was like. You can see the island. It was all just asphalt and. Anything that ex effectively extends the sidewalk is so, so good. Because how many of you have sidewalks like this, right? Where you have to walk like elephants, <laughs> single file. You can't talk to the person next to you. Uh, so this this was in Hutchinson. This is a project Laura and I did in Hutchinson. Um, they have the Cosmosphere, which is like the place to go to in uh, is that it's Hutchinson, Kansas. Hutchinson, Kansas. This is the crosswalk. The, the parking lot is over the street. Five lane crosswalk. People walking it all the time. Not much traffic. I said, give me some cones. We're going to fix this. So we fixed it for a few, like an hour maybe it, it, it was up. 
but it shortened the crossing distance. They've got the, Apollo 13 is there. Like people go there. It's like you've never heard of Hutchinson, Kansas, but that's where Apollo 13. Um, and we shortened the crossing distance. People are like, oh, that's so much easier to cross the street now because like a lot of people can't walk fast enough. That like the, the cycle time isn't long enough. Um, I, I told the kids to chalk up the black box. I hope none of them got caught by the police. But, you know, they, they, they really helped them take ownership of the space. Um, we're, we're doing work now with an amazing video game designer that creates these um, animations. Some of you might have seen this. This is the Jeff Speck Road, road Diet one. Um, there's a lot of streets like this in Vancouver. Watch out. Um, I don't want to say anything bad about Vancouver. <laughs> It's great, they're, they're doing great things, but there's a lot of four lane roads, very high traffic speeds, and you'll just stumble upon them. So just watch out, there's a lot of roads like this, and there's a lot of potential in this city for doing L LQC projects. Because you could, you, could, you could do this with an, an LQC. You can just tear out the paint, restripe it, try it out for a few months, why not? You know, it's way better to have the, the bike lane protected by, by parked cars. All right, my time's up. Over to you, Laura. You're going to talk about um, Montclair. All right. There are seats in the front if anyone in the back wants to sit down and if anyone who's near the aisle can scoot in. Thanks. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about um, my favorite day of last summer. Um, and uh, it's a project that I worked on as a volunteer in my community of Montclair, New Jersey. Does anyone know where New Jersey is? <laughs> um, we are a community, we're a bedroom community to New, York, to New York City. We're about 12 miles west of the city. Um, and last August, it was about 98 degrees and very humid, and we had about 100 volunteers to come out and work on this project. So I'm gonna tell you about that. Um, in my hometown, um, I don't wear my PPS hat, I wear my Bike and Walk Montclair hat, which is a community advocacy group, um, all volunteers, where we're trying to make our streets safer for biking and walking. And when we talk about LQC at PPS, we say, we don't want to pick the projects that are like a big boulder that you have to push up the hill. We want to pick the projects that are easier to, to have small successes with and that can build momentum and be the snowball rolling down the hill. Um, so this project, the, the intersection mural that we worked on was part of the snowball rolling down the hill, but I want to just tell you a little bit about the boulder pushing up the hill because there was some background work done to enable this um, project to happen. So Bike and Walk Montclair was founded in 2002 and they said we want more people biking and walking on safer streets and we know that when we have safer streets there'll be more people biking and walking and vice versa. So they worked on that um, and in the beginning, we would talk about things like, uh, I don't know, shared space on the roads or bike lanes or maybe losing parking. And we were met with some serious resistance. We were, like, people were like, what are you talking about? We can't do that. We're a car culture, right? But we never gave up. And one of the things that we learned, partly from PPS, um, was that you have to find the zealous nuts in the community to get the stuff done. You have to find the community champions. And even though I'm standing up here with a pixie cut, that long hair person in the tiara is me. Um, <laughs> and we never gave up. And one of the things we did was we built lots of relationships with all the important decision makers in the community. And we built relationships with the people in the community, um, just the public. And through those partnerships, we began to become a trusted resource. And now, it's funny, when the, the township wants to go for a grant or something, they'll ask Bike and Walk Montclair to write a letter of a recommendation. Um, and we also tried things. So back in the very, very early days, before we even heard of LQC or tactical urbanism or do-it-yourself urbanism, we um, did this thing called Bring Your Own Bike Lane. And we took these old banners and we spray painted them to look like a bike lane and we brought them to all the um, community parades. And we would just throw the bike lane down and people would ride over it. So that was our very first LQC project. Then we started to build up momentum and we would do things like on International Walk and Bike to School Day, we would work with the town police and the town engineer to do pop-up bike lanes. And so the kids and their parents had a way to get to school in a protected bike lane where there aren't any in the town. And what do you think they said, what do you think the parents said to us when they got to the school? Why don't we have more of these? 
So this was a really great way to kind of build community support for things like that. Another thing we did is we worked with the, um, the business improvement district in the town center and the township engineer, and we started to just bring interest to our crosswalks. And we wanted to work um, in, a, in such a way that we could continue to use the ladder striping and the thermoplastic um, uh, material. And so we just played a little bit with the positive and negative space, and it creates this little bit of interest um, and walkability in the downtown. Um, we also brought performance art. This is another lighter, chip, chi lighter, quicker, cheaper way to bring awareness to pedestrian and bicycle safety. We had dancers and music in the crosswalk. And if you Google um, on, well, if you go to YouTube and go Red Light Session Montclair Center, you'll see this great video. It's really awesome. Um, so for the intersection, we got our uh, inspiration from the City Repair Project in Portland, Oregon. And the problem we needed to solve was there are several schools in this one little neighborhood and there's a four-way stop, but there hadn't been a four-way stop. There was a lot of, you know, kids walking and biking, um, a lot of traffic, poor sight distance. The schools lobbied for a four-way stop. They agreed, they put that in. And then um, Haley Winstead, that zealous nut in the upper right, um, had a Girl Scout project she needed to do and she needed to do community service and she wanted to do something with community beautification um, But she had never heard of traffic calming before she had never heard of you know community building So we worked with her to do this lighter quicker cheaper project at this intersection So it was it only took four months um, It only took paint and elbow grease and it was absolutely cheap because it cost zero dollars, but <laughs> That's not really true. Everything was volunteered. So the police that came out worked through a pedestrian safety grant. The artist donated her time. The, um, the hardware store donated all the paint. And we had 100 volunteers that came out to actually do it. And we had musicians that day. And it was really, um, it was really a lot of fun. And it has resulted in so many thumbs up. And right on the corner is Ruthie's Barbecue and Pizza. And Ruthie's has blues every Friday and Saturday night. And the people are spilling out from Ruthie's into, like, well, not into the intersection, but to look at the intersection. And that really has enhanced their business as well. So they have become a partner. Um, one of the great things is that this process is being folded into the township policies. So other communities, other neighborhoods in the community who want to do um, intersection murals we're, we're building that into the program and then next week next Saturday we're having an open streets event with a build your own parklet um, so we're going to introduce parklets to Montclair next week so I like to think of my community as my little um, my my lab for experimentation so that's kind of um, that's what I'm doing in Montclair so thank you and I'm going to hand it over to Grace now <laughs> So today I'm here to just talk about a project we did in St. Louis, Missouri around pop-up traffic calming demonstrations, essentially LQC, what we're all really familiar with. So one brief history of the city of St. Louis structure and our built environment is that we are a city that's built for about a million people, but we only have about 320,000 that actually live in the city. A lot of the streets are really wide. So we have these wide streets with not really anything slowing anyone down, so we are a focus city with high rates of pedestrian and bicyclist facilities. So first I'd like to thank the partners that made it happen. This grant was funded through a program called Plan for Help. It's a CDC funded grant. There's over 30 coalitions across the state and it's in partnership with APA and APHA and also our state chapter and the city help. So I'm doing a couple presentations while I'm at the conference, but today I'm just going to, for this presentation right now, I'm focusing on site plan design. So if you want to hear more of a step-by-step -step of maybe how to do your own LQC project in a low-cost way, highly suggest you to come to one of the other ones. So while you're picking your site, there's a lot of different things you should really consider. What's the purpose of the demonstration is always the first question that if anyone asks me how do I plan it, that's the first question I ask back. And if you don't have a great definition of what that purpose is, I highly recommend you go back with your stakeholders and really talk about what you're trying to get out of it. And it's also thinking about what that current purpose of the street is, who owns the street, existing codes, are you taking away parking, removing parking, looking at the current street width, what the ideal street width might be in that 
community and thinking about the speed limit, traffic flow, crash data, and whatever that surrounding land use might be. So within the city of St. Louis, what traffic calming is to a lot of residents and community members are that it's putting in these really big white pots in the middle of the street, and now it's going, I put something in an intersection, so I'm inclined people are gonna slow down, right? And it's really not true at all. So we wanted to educate them on what traffic calming solutions are and what they might look like in the community. So materials that you can use is really, you wanna think of the low cost materials. You don't need anything really high end. The picture up here where we're putting down a crosswalk is just roofing tar paper and regular household white duct tape. The next photo over with the tires are all free donated tires from local auto shops and we clean them we spray painted them in really bright vibrant colors and in the bottom right we just got cones off of amazon it was the cheapest way and quickest way for me to find colorful cones that we could add in the demonstration using orange traffic cones borrowing it from your community is really great if you don't have any funding but we wanted to make sure the pop-out traffic calming demonstrations really stuck out and we also added reflective tape to the tops as well. And it's really thinking about while you're doing the demonstration, where are you coming together with the community? Where can people come to ask questions? It's putting up wayfinding signs so people actually understand what they're looking at as well. So really quickly, I'm going to go over a few of our site plans we did for the demonstrations. I'm going to highlight different things on each of them. So this one, I wanted to highlight chicanes. So Anyone who's not familiar with what a chicane is, is essentially just trying to veer you slightly off your current path and make you maybe drive in an S or whatever shape it might be. What we found really quickly with the chicane design is that one, the city didn't feel comfortable with it being lower, for the through lanes to be lower than 10 feet. So in between that chicane, it's about 20 feet. And it was also in a residential area. So not only was it wide enough for a car to just drive straight through it, it just really didn't make sense. But the really great thing about the chicane was that the city was really supportive in us trying out all types of traffic calming measures. So this one is a mixture of medians and choke points. And it turned out to be a lot more of aggressive of a traffic calming. And is this was a street that's about 50 feet wide and cars are typically going about 45 miles per hour on average. So with this design, we were able to get cars to drive on average about 30 miles per hour during the demonstration. So it was a great drastic change that the community needed. The alderman's been really supportive and he wants to see more demonstrations happening at this intersection to find the right design that would make sense for the neighborhood. And then in this site plan, I just want to highlight our mini roundabout that's at the top corner. So you can do roundabouts, you can test out all these different type of traffic calming demonstrations. And the great thing about this roundabout was that the fire department, the police, community members, city staff, the mayor even came out. And we kind of wanted to just see what, how would the community respond if we put these in, since sometimes it can be contentious issues or maybe not. But it was great because the fire department was using their fire trucks to go around the roundabout to see if we got the width correctly or could they make that turn with that median there and they were able to give us really great feedback on the day of and then this next one was actually our most simple demonstration we've done so far all it really is a bun is bump outs but and with a temporary crosswalk what i want to highlight is that crosswalk in, in the middle with those bump outs because that actually is our biggest permanent change that we brought within the city of St. Louis. We, this is right next to an elementary school and through a different grant and through the work from our coalition, we were able to bring in an under a year, a permanent crosswalk with a permanent bump out as well. So it's really using these lighter, quicker, cheaper projects and really getting to whatever that next phase be in, thinking about who are your existing partners and that you can really do it and it can bring in permanent change in, so two of the main questions I always get is, how did you do the crosswalks? It's really easy. Uh, we created a how-to guide manual. And in the manual, uh, we do this step-by-step -step and you can get the materials as well. So if you're really interested, uh, I highly suggest you to look at this toolkit that we created. And the other question we always get is, how did you do the mini roundabout? It's really easy. What we used were, drop cloths that we cut into the shapes that we want, twine, permit marker, tape, and a bunch of cones, tires, and bringing in those signage so that people understand what they're coming towards. So 
When you're doing these different designs, obviously you want it to be engineering standard and as perfect as you can, but it's also knowing that it's a temporary design, so maybe the infrastructure isn't necessarily set up to fit a mini roundabout or whatever you're trying to mimic, but it's a great way to help people envision what it might look like. And it's really using these simple materials to get to the point that you're trying to get the feedback on. And the great thing about this is that after we did the demonstration, this was the first piece of equipment that the city of St. Louis wanted to borrow from us because they wanted to keep testing out more mini roundabouts in the different wards to see if community members would respond positively to it. And I can say that one of the wards actually already said, community loves it, I'm gonna put my ward capital funds towards bringing in a mini roundabout for that neighborhood. Grace, mm -hmm. could, you, could you use a roundabout for a gateway into a town? Yeah. So, could you call this a gateway drug? Um, <laughs> well, the city of St. Louis's um, slogan is also gateway to the west, so yeah, you know, a lot of different gateway drugs that we could do it. <laughs> Um, one thing I do want to highlight though when you're doing these demonstrations and to really prove change can happen is actually collect data. So we collected data on a non-demonstration day and a demonstration day. We measured speed with regular speed guns. We didn't do anything high-tech fancy. We also looked at stop sign compliance and we did a survey to grab qualitative data as well to see how people were feeling on a demonstration day and a non-demonstration day and what they really thought about the project. And it's really, what was important about this whole project for us was the community buy-in. It just won't happen if you don't actually engage those who actually live in that area, the local businesses, the community residents who've been there for well, generations. It's really important to bring them in and to bring in elected officials, city staff, whoever you're trying to work with. So a few resources I wanna highlight is that we have two really great videos. One of them is a summary of what the project was, what it meant to the city of St. Louis. The other one is a little bit longer, but it's from a community perspective of why this project mattered to them and why it was important for them to have it. And the best thing I wanna highlight is, I kinda of touched on it while I was presenting, is that we created a how-to guide. It's a how-to manual. It's basically all my thoughts written down on a piece of paper. It's over 100 pages with great resources. It's got our survey templates, our site plans, basics, and what you wanna consider when you're making a site plan. I have a hard copy with me up here. It is one of the prizes that you can win, so if you enter your business card, and you can find it online, so if you want, the link just feel free to email me thanks oh and so this is our contact information 